guys, welcome back. Chris at Rockford Ordnance. Today I'm bringing you a video on our Grand. I know we've been bringing out, uh, you know, a bunch of different things on the Grand, but I'm enjoying it that much. I'm that excited about it and I'm having that much fun. So why not share it with you guys? Uh, you saw our last video, we were refinishing the stock, not refinishing really, but oiling it. Uh, we did a little sanding and uh, hit it with some boiled linseed oil. I got three coats on it before I said, hell, I gotta get out and shoot this thing. So we put it back together with the three coats. And over the last week or so, it's really soaked up a lot of that. It looked a bit shinier even two days ago. This wood must have been really dry and it soaked it in. But it's a gorgeous finish. I may put a few more on uh, just to protect it more. Uh, make it look even better, a little deeper, a little darker, whatever. Uh, you can never put too much oil on, I guess. I, I mean, you can put it on too heavy and it gets sticky, but if you let it dry right, you can never have too much oil on them. Uh, I had made some comments and had uh, answered some other comments uh, below the, one of the videos and one of the guys there asked uh, he said god I can't get enough of these grands. I love looking at them. Could you show more pictures of the grand? So this is kind of for you. This is uh, uh, I'll do some flybys here. I don't know how good they look, but should give you an idea how our stock came out and the condition of some of the metal on this gun and all and it's really uh, some good video you can see so close up here uh, some of the grain in the wood and uh, in the metal and all that good stuff so hopefully you like that these flybys but uh, yeah we took it out yesterday of course when I take my son to the range with me the I ask him what do you want to bring and Grand is always on the menu since we've gotten this rifle. He, this has been his favorite rifle since, God, I, four or five years old. He's one of these kids where uh, he's always wanted to be a soldier. Always, always, from the time he, is, he could talk damn near. And uh, it wasn't for the re some of the reasons some kids have. You know where they're you know, they like playing uh army or uh they're infatuated with video games or something like that he has he wants to join for all the right reasons and he did uh he unfortunately the day before he was to leave for basic uh he broke his leg racing motorcycles not too smart a move uh, they weren't too happy with him. However, they did their best to keep him in. He was uh, in the National Guard, and they kept him as long as they could, but there was the, the injury was much more in-depth than they originally thought, and it required multiple, multiple surgeries, uh, going out of state to get it fixed and all. And finally, uh, he ended up with a medical discharge, which to him was heartbreaking, absolutely heartbreaking. And, uh, you know, it's been a year or two now since that all happened, but uh, I, I think he always looks at it as God has a plan, and uh, he's part of it. So uh, his life is moving along just great. Uh, he still has an affection for the military, and who knows, maybe after college uh, he'll do something about it. We'll see. I don't know. But anyways, getting back on point, this was always his favorite rifle. He wanted one of these. We were at the range one day uh, up here in Wisconsin, and he, we're shooting, and he comes running up to me. He says, Dad, Dad, there's a guy down there with a grand. Can we go look? And I said, well, let's wait till he takes a break, and we'll go talk to him. So we went down, and he must have seen the look at my son's face because he says, hey, do you want to shoot it? Is it okay if he shoots it? And I looked at him. I said, do you want to shoot it? He says, yeah. And he shot it, and you've never, ever... <laughs> I get a little sentimental. I mean, you've never seen such a look on a kid's face as after he shot that rifle. He absolutely adored it. And uh, most of the drive for me to get one of these was for him. Uh, these will all be his one day. So, heck, uh, I guess this is his. I'm going to get him another one so he has his own right now. 
But uh, yeah, every time we go to the range, he just, uh, the first thing is, yeah, bring the grand. And he had shot him before, but yesterday was the day he really kind of dug in, you know, and we were shooting a hanging steel gong. And I, I didn't get any footage because for once it was range day with my son, spend some time with my son, not worry about videos, not worry about, you know, camera angles and different stuff. Just me and my son going shooting and have truly having fun. I wish I had a cameraman because it would have been some great footage, but we had a blast. And the one thing he noticed shooting that we had shot, uh, we were shooting a Scorpion Evo. Uh, we were shooting an AK pistol and a few other things. And when he shot that target with this 30 out six, he turned, he was on the stock, he turned and looked off the stock at me and he said, did you see that wallop? And I said, yeah, that thing hits hard, doesn't it? And if you've never uh, shot uh, one of these, it, they pack a punch. I can only imagine World War II and, you know, today I guess, you know, the M4, not to put it down or say it's not lethal or anything like that, but I would think you take a couple, two, three rounds of that, okay, yeah, it could put you down, but this thing, damn near take you off your feet, I bet. I mean, you know you got hit if you got hit with one of these, let me tell you. Um, that being said, it doesn't translate to heavy recoil or anything. It, the gun is just smoother than anything to shoot. And the more I shoot this gun, the smoother this action gets. It's just, just really, really smooth. Uh, you can feel the workmanship and the quality in these rifles. And here, I never show this side for some reason. Uh, God, it's just a pleasure to shoot. We were only shooting at 50 yards at that gong. And uh, we were pounding it pretty consistently, just, you know, uh, offhand shooting, uh, no rest or anything like that. And... Uh, it just shot magnificent. We had some problems with clips. I had some repop clips and they were, I thought it was me. And you see the previous video, if you saw it, I thought it was me not knowing how to load these clips, uh, not knowing how to put them in the gun, the gun being new, so hard to push in and all this stuff. Well, guess what? It wasn't me. It was those damn clips. They were you know, some repop, aftermarket, whatever. And I've got these bandoliers here of ammo. And uh, I picked these up at a local gun shop. Gun shop had closed. Uh, the owner had unexpectedly died. Another tragic story, actually. But uh, he had unexpectedly died. And they had an auction closing the gun shop down. Family member stepped in, said he wanted to reopen it, but all the inventory was gone. So they had been there so long, they got on their Facebook page and all, and uh, asked for people to bring in anything and everything that they either wanted to donate to the store, put on consignment, uh, or sell to the store. Anything for inventory to, quote, make it look like a gun shop, because it was bare walls. So guys brought stuff maybe they weren't using or, uh, you know, just whatever. And this was some of it. I got a couple of ammo cans of it with these in it and then a couple extras. And it's caliber 30 ball M2 eight round clips. Uh, it says HXP 124-5-80. I don't know if you can see that there. Uh, so I don't know what production this is or you know when it was made if it's world war ii korea modern i don't know uh it looks like the necks of the cases are really annealed on these things because the brass changes color if you can see that there uh but yeah these repop clips when they're loaded the eighth round you just can barely get in and then they don't sit flat along it and they're all and they feel much wider than a normal loaded clip because the rounds aren't sitting in there right. And when you put them in, 
uh, you know, like the, here when it's unloaded, it'll drop in. But when they're loaded, you can't even get it in. It will not go. It's too wide. So I just happened to grab one of these and I put it in and lo and behold, look at that. Let me get it here. Look at that. Nice and easy. No big deal. One thumb, boom, boom, boom. And now I load it like a pro. So it was the clips. It wasn't me being uh, uh, lacking <laughs> or being a moron. It was the clips. Uh, maybe I was a moron for not figuring it out quicker, but uh, yeah. Now, boy, I just put these things in, slam them home, pop it out, and the gun slams home. There's none of this, bam, slamming it. And uh, it works great. So I didn't really want to shoot these in the bandolier. I don't know if they're rare, if they're, they're just kind of cool to put on display with the gun and stuff. But I suppose I could actually... Uh, reload them with some of the brass I saved from the grand ammo I've been shooting. Been shooting that PPU, it's specially made uh, for the grand. Uh, different powder, lighter load or different burn to it or whatever. Doesn't mess up your op rod and your gas system uh, like modern ammo could. That's a big thing guys, don't use modern ammo in these guns. You can, but you're gonna, they make a replacement uh, gas uh, plug, I guess, that is either adjustable or lets off of any overpressure or what, what have you. I don't know exactly how it works, but I've heard of them. Uh, I just want to leave it alone. I reload. You can see my reloading bench back there. Uh, so I've been saving up all the brass and we are going to be reloading for this. I got to get me some 30 out 6 dies. Uh, otherwise I'd be shooting it more already. But yeah, I gotta go out and buy some 30 out six dies. And uh, money's tight these days for the hobby. So uh, we'll see how that goes. But uh, yeah, these clips worked magnificent. That's the other thing. Guys are afraid of grand thumb or people that don't know are. Guys, you can push in all you want with this thing. And that thing ain't coming forward until you push it far enough to where you hear the click and then you let off. It's when you, you click it and you let off that that bolt's coming forward. Until then, you can do whatever you want and nothing's gonna happen. You could put some sensitive parts in there and not worry about them getting uh, nicked. Anyhow, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty good sighted in. Uh, we may tweak it a little bit we got a 200 yard range here, so when I get it all solid at 100, uh, we'll head out to 200 and see how we can do there. And then around the corner, there's a 300 yard range too, where we could probably uh, see how we do at 300, but I don't know if my old eyes will uh, handle that that well. I can't, it's getting worse and worse. I gotta shoot with optics, it's just uh, tough, but Hey, this will work my eyes out and keep me in shape. Uh, I do notice, even shooting it a couple times, laying it on the bench, this and that, you get some little shiny spots and a couple little dings, but hey, this isn't a safe queen. I do like my guns to look pretty, uh, but it's going to get a few, you know, little pressure marks or whatever, and I just think it'll look better and better the more... Uh, worn in it gets and the more oil and everything just so beautiful what a rifle should be uh, a blend of hardwood walnut and blued steel it doesn't get prettier than that I look at firearms uh, as much as a tool a weapon uh, a piece of art I really do look at it as a piece of art. I see the design, uh, sometimes the simplicity, uh, other times even the complexity. But uh, I just marvel at someone being able to take some raw chunk of mineral, uh, steel, iron, uh, and natural products, wood, and turn it into something with such perfection and lines and 
I, I think that's 50% of why I like the gun hobby. Um, I, it's just so neat to see a machine work at such a level and then throw the history in on top of it and what this rifle meant to the world, what it did for the world. <laughs> it saved the world from tyranny, right? Uh, and still could. That's another thing we were, me and my son were talking about. And, and God, there's so much. It, it's, you know, the gun hobby can bring you together with your kids, your family, uh, and educate um, the history. We were talking, my son's a huge history buff. I think both of us would be history teachers uh, if, if we could. But uh, the history in a weapon, uh, from the history of the maker to the company that made it, to the country that used it, to the countries it freed, uh, and on and on and on, uh, to the soldiers that carried it, and the battles that ensued. Uh, the history is just magnificent, and you can really come together uh, with your family, with your children, with friends, and uh, in, enjoy it. And it all starts around a conversation starter, and that's this M1 Grand. We also talked about whether or not the platform was still viable. Uh, I had it apart. And he, he said something about, boy, it looks, uh, for a second I thought you had an M14 there. And uh, I, I don't know if it was because I had the trigger group out or something, I don't know. But he said, you know, I was thinking about that. He said the Grand and the M14 are still very viable platforms. And I said, oh yeah, you know, you, you don't need, uh, you know, modern day firearms to well while they do give you an advantage absolutely and why and they are relevant but uh these rifles can certainly protect your family bring food home or fight tyranny if need be uh they did amazing things with these rifles and whether it's an m1 grand or an m14 absolutely these weapons are still viable and could be used for any uh, of those purposes. Uh, I wouldn't feel uh, all that uh, at a disadvantage if I had to carry this weapon into battle. Um, I, I really wouldn't, just assuming I could carry enough ammo. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a conversation starter. It evokes thoughts and, and feelings and emotions and all of that good stuff and uh, does it in a way that maybe uh, you know a put together AR or some basic uh, AK or something doesn't. Uh, while the AK does evoke a, a, a little more emotion and, and history and all, the AR you know some of them maybe an M4 you know a classically uh, issue type of M4 does but uh, God, so much behind this rifle. I'm sorry I'm babbling, guys, but uh, I think sometimes it's just neat to look at the weapon itself, uh, forget about, you know, the add-ons and the shooting and the ammunition and the range days and the testing and just talk about the rifle itself and the hobby. And uh, so I thought I'd bring you this video, show you the gun, uh, hopefully you enjoyed some of the flybys there. I'm not the greatest uh, videographer or, or uh, picture taker, but uh, hopefully it gave you guys something to do and something to look at and something to enjoy. So get out there, grab a Grand, grab a Springfield, grab an Enfield, grab something with a little history to it and something that's made out of wood and blued steel, take the kids shooting, take the wife shooting, take the family shooting, go with a friend and just enjoy yourself and enjoy that piece of history that you can hold in your hand. Uh, like I said, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for everything you do. Thanks for the comments helping me with this because I'm not an expert. I never claim to be. 
I just like to share the little bit of knowledge I do have and my experiences with you guys. And you guys are the ones that make this channel great. So uh, thanks again for everything. Um, as always, Rockford Ordnance out.